everybody, welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have our final 2-in-1 Elite Series 81 WWE Elite Action Figure Reviews on The Rock and Stunning Steve Austin. And we are, of course, going to rank Elite Series 81 in this video from best to worst in my own personal opinion. So if you care about that, guys, definitely stick around. I am excited to get into these and break down what we got going. There are some things that we're going to talk about that, I, that I'm not happy with with, 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 with this, with this. But, you know, we'll get into all the good stuff. But on the front view window you do have the rock and stunning steve we have like a current look of a of a legend and then we have like a throwback look of a legend pretty interesting but diving into it guys on the side of the packaging you got the rock you got stunning steve right here on the back you get images of both of them there if you'd like to read the bio reads you can do so now we have reviewed the rest of the figures in the wave so definitely go check out those reviews another image of both men on the side and that pretty much does it for our packaging guys if you would like to pick up either of these you can go over to ringside collectibles wrestlingfigures.com use promo code mdtoys to save yourselves 10 percent also they are having a thanks giving sale so you definitely don't want to miss out on that and get in on that we also have a championship in here that i'm really looking forward to but anyways guys that pretty much breaks down the packaging of the rock and stunning steve from elite 81 so let's go ahead and crack these guys out of the packaging so we can get into our ranking later on in this video wait this way idiot <gasps> So here's the Rock and Stunning Steve out of the packaging, and I just noticed that I have Stunning Steve's box over here and the Rock's box over here, but yeah, 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 yeah. it doesn't matter that much. So diving into it, guys, you guys know we are going to rank these figures in this set. I'm very interested to see how that ranking goes. I don't have it in my brain, so we're just going to have to find out together how that goes. So what we're going to do is we're going to run through the Rock's accessories and the Rock, and then we're going to run it back and take a closer look at Stunning Steve's accessories and Stunning Steve, and then we are going to rank all of Elite Series 81 from worst to best in my own personal opinion. So let's Let's go ahead and dive into the Rock's accessories. All right, guys, so diving into the Rock's accessories here, we do get interchangeable fisted hands, so you get the fisted hands for him to throw up the fist, you know, when he gets on the turnbuckle and stuff like that. He also comes with mic holding hands out of the packaging, and mine actually came with two left hands, so that is just that is just brilliant. I mean, we don't get enough hands in this skin tone, I feel like, so, so that is boomerific. I do hate that we got that, but I'm pretty sure I have some extra hands, hopefully, but we'll have to see about that, but he does have mic holding hands. He also comes with a mic, so you guys know if you have a mic you gotta have mic holding hands but there is the mic it's got the nice wwe logo it's got the blue on there this is the premiere of you know smackdown on fox i'm pretty sure it was the friday night smackdown premiere so that is the reason that uh you know we're getting this figure and he also comes with this claw he also comes with this claw he also comes with this he also comes with this interchangeable he also comes with this he also comes with this cloth tank top right here and it has this white outline on it it's very nice it's a black color and it does go on the figure nice you guys already saw how it went on the figure this is not accurate to what he wore, but since, you know, Mattel's not sponsored or Mattel doesn't have the rights to Under Armour, there's supposed to be an Under Armour logo here and then a Brahma Bull, like, Rock logo right there. I'm pretty sure The Rock is the biggest athlete outside of Steph Curry that signed with Under Armour, and so they don't have the rights to put the Under Armour logo and the Rock Brahma Bull logo on there, but it is a nice t-shirt. I actually want this shirt. It's a very nice shirt. You know, they didn't have the rights, so they just gave him a plain black tank top, but you could probably put this on Roman Reigns. I bet Roman Reigns would look good in this shirt. I bet you could put it on a bunch of other different guys and, you know, make some pretty cool fix-ups, so I don't know how this figure is going to do out in the wild. The Rock is very, very popular, so he may fly off shelves, but this may rot on shelves, and you may be able to pick up a few of these for parts and maybe some interchangeable things to put this on Roman, to put this on other guys, but that pretty much does it for The Rock's accessories, guys. So with that being said, let's dive into The Rock himself. So diving into The Rock himself, guys, getting into this head sculpt, I'm pretty sure we've seen this head sculpt many times. I don't think we've gotten in true effects, but I'm not really feeling it. I feel like maybe an older, like, pissed-off Rock head sculpt would have been better, but you know, it is what it is. Is. It's the premiere on SmackDown and, you know, Fox, and he's trying to look all happy and stuff, but I don't know. I just don't think it captures the likeness that much. It looks similar to Dwayne Johnson, but I don't think it fully captures it. One thing we're going to get into is this torso is way too small for The Rock. I know that it works for a classic Rock or a throwback Rock, but for this type of Rock to be in 2020, The Rock is absolutely jacked. Like, holy Christ, the Elite 22 Rock torso would have been a lot better for this figure, and one thing that is awesome about this figure is he does have his updated Brahma Bull tattoo, which you can see right here. It looks just like it. I think they did a really excellent job capturing it. But uh, one thing they're going to have to do is we're going to have to torso swap this guy. I mean, that's just the bottom line because Stone Cold Stunning Steve said so. So this is something we're definitely going to have to do. I don't know when I'll do it. It's not a priority for me, but I definitely want to do it. I think the bigger torso will look better. He honestly probably needs longer legs as well because these legs, these jogger Shane McMahon legs that we've seen that we put on our Roman Reigns, it probably is going to make him look a bit short. Even though I did use a similar, you know, I used the, the rock torso 
torso on my Roman Reigns with these legs, and it works out fine, so maybe there'll be some ways around it. It may not look that bad, but we're gonna have to put these shoulders in there to give us the same arms on that rock, but this torso has to be switched. It's definitely too small. I wish they would've gave him the Elite 22 rock torso, because it's way more accurate. Like, a guy who's actually that jacked in, you know, in Dwayne Johnson gets the smaller torso, and then Roman Reigns gets the more jacked one, when Roman probably fits more of this style. Even though he's a little bit more cut up, he's not as gigantic as The Rock or Dwayne Johnson, so I think that other torso would work. Another thing that bothers me about this figure is the stripes on the side of the legs don't line up, so, you know, this thigh right here, this upper part is not gonna line up, and then, like, when you move it all the way down, it's just not gonna be in line, and that kind of gets on my nerves right there, so that is kind of annoying. He is on ball joints because these are Shane McMahon legs, but you get all the nice white stripes, you get the black and white sneakers, and these are John Cena feet, so you guys already know he's leaning forward, ready to collapse. So that's unfortunate, but, you know, this rock figure is what it is. You know, I don't think this was necessarily needed in the wave, but I think if you torso swapped it, it could make for a cool rock figure. It's just, I don't know, man, not, not really feeling it. So for your rock figure comparisons, guys, I mean, you can pretty much see it from here. I mean, look at this Elite 22 rock right here. This torso fits the rock so much better. We need this torso over here. Look at how the tattoo fits in proportion. I mean, dude, this, uh, the, the legs used here, I mean, I know you have to use certain parts, but look how much taller this rock is compared to this rock. Um, this is what this rock would look like if it gave it the right torso pretty much with this sh sleeveless shirt on there and the cloth. It just looks so much better, man. It's not even accurate. It it's definitely better. I think a pissed off head sculpt would have fit in better as well. Just take this head sculpt with true effects technology and it would have been perfect. This is just, I mean, dude, this, no doubt about it, this figure looks, this will, this figure would look much better with the Elite 22 torso on there and there it is. This is our last kind of, you know, modernized promo attire return rock from, uh, I think it was WrestleMania and this is the TNF figure with a different head sculpt, but you guys can see, clear as day, this figure would definitely look better, but I'm not even getting into more comparisons. I mean, that it's it's plain and obvious. So for Stunning Steve, guys, you do get a little bit more than The Rock. Starting off, guys, let's start off with this championship. I'm pretty sure, I'm not entirely sure, but I'm about 90% sure that we have never seen this WCW Tag Team Championship before, and as one half of the Hollywood Blonde, Stunning Steve was a WCW Tag Team Champion along with Brian Pillman, and this looks great. I like the little plate clip we got over here, the gold clip on the title right there. I like the logos we got going on. Probably a little bit too much blue paint going on right there. My world logo is a little bit lopsided, but if you're just putting this guy on display and everything, I still think it's going to look good. I like the WC logo going on there. Very nice championship. Maybe you could, you know, take this and customize it and make some cool pick-fed belts or something, but there is the WCW Tag Team Championship. He also comes with interchangeable fisted hands. Out of the packaging, he has mic holding hands, and I don't have two left ones. He actually does have accurate ones, so you get mic holding hands and fists. You also have the little director's cut thing right here that they used to do their entrance with, and you also have like some nice details here. It's a nice articulated arm right here for, it always reminds me of like Toy Story for the like blooper reels. They used to do this after the, they had like deleted scenes where they go marker and then they go clack and then you know they, they say action. Marker. And then they clack it down and then they go and that's how they stay on timing I think when t doing cuts and takes but on the back you got scene take roll date producer sound director cameraman very nice it's actually very nice and I think you could use this as a backstage prop or something so that's pretty cool and then we have the stunning Steve you guys see SS red stars right there for his entrance vest on the back it says Hollywood blonde stunning Steve with the star very nice we've seen this very similar to Brian Pillman's I'm pretty sure it's the exact same except it doesn't say flying Brian or Brian Pillman on it anywhere, but there is the Stunning Steve entrance vest. I like it. You know, for vests, I don't really mind it because, you know, they go on the figure well. They're easy to take off. They don't hinder articulation that much, so this is very nice to see, even though on the back of the packaging for this figure, he has a cloth vest on or a cloth robe, and that would have been nice to see, but we got a lot of other cloth in this way, but that does it for Stunning Steve's accessories, guys. Let's dive into Stunning Steve himself. So getting into Stunning Steve, guys, I like this head sculpt a lot. He is looking off to the right. I wish he was looking forward, but, you know, it is what it is. I like the blonde combed over haircut we got going on. I think the likeness to Steve Austin is totally there. I like the beard. I like the head sculpt. I, you know, I used to say, you guys remember me saying when we saw this, maybe you could like shave off the hair, you know, give him the bald technique and then paint, you know, different beard color on there and redo it. And you might be able to make a smiling Stone Cold Steve Austin. We'll have to see about that. But going down to the torso, same Stone Cold Steve Austin torso. I'm pretty sure they just used a Ringmaster body, the Toys R Us Network Spotlight Ringmaster body, and then just, you know, gave him the Hollywood blondes. Uh, 
higher with the stars. I am having a little bit of blackness here on my star, which I don't like. On the back, it says blondes with the red star. He has just his big thighs right there, big knee pads. I love these boots with the, the black stars with the white and the black tongue with the black laces, black outsoles. They look really, really clean. White wrist tape. Pretty plain Jane figure, but I still like it. I think we still needed this figure, especially since we already have Brian Pillman, and I think a lot of flashback collectors are going to like this figure a lot. I think this figure is superior to the Rock figure. Um, it's just a lot better. The proportions are better. The head sculpt's better. It's just a better figure. It's definitely a better figure. He is on ball joints, if you guys were wondering, if you guys wanted to use this for customization. Uh, I like it, though. It's a really nice figure. I, of course, did not grow up with this or anything like that, but it's still a really nice figure, and being a big Stone Cold Steve Austin, you know, just a fan of Steve Austin overall, Stone Cold was still a baller back then. Even though he wasn't Stone Cold Steve Austin just yet, he was stunning Steve Austin. He was still a baller back in the day, and we can appreciate that. So for your Hollywood blonde stunning Steve Austin comparisons, guys, we have the new Elite 81 Stunning Steve. You have the ringside exclusive Bionic Redneck Stone Cold Steve Austin with the smiling head sculpt. You have our Best of Attitude Era Elite Stone Cold. And then we have his tag team partner in Brian Pillman right here with their matching boots. Not completely matching, but I have seen where somebody put this head sculpt on this body and it worked. Once you put on the, the if you put the entrance vest on there as well, I think it works. The skin tones are inaccurate and Brian Pillman was much leaner than this, but it still works out completely. It is cool to see both of the blondes up next to each other, even though their attires don't match. And you guys can see here in the, uh, the, you know, the Stone Cold Steve Austin is smiling head sculpt compared to this one. The likeness is definitely better here, but we are getting the Ultimate Edition Stone Cold, and I think it is going to be an updated version of this, and it will look much better, but I did want to compare them and see what it looks like, but yeah, I did want to get in these comparisons, but that pretty much does it for your Stunning Steve football comparisons. Alright guys, it is that time to rank Elite Series 81 from worst to best in my own personal opinion. Now, before we get into this, just know this is my own personal ranking. You may disagree completely, or you may agree completely, and that's okay. And just because I put a figure at the very bottom doesn't mean it doesn't have any good qualities whatsoever, and just because I put a figure at number one doesn't mean it's without fault, and it's just the greatest thing since sliced bread. So now that we've discovered those rules and talked about it, let's rank these figures from worst to best. Let's come in at the bottom of the ranking, and I have to no doubt about it, give it to The Rock. I mean, Jesus Christ, man, I'm not a fan of the head sculpt. I think the only thing that is appealing about this figure is the cloth t-shirt and the updated tattoo, but he he's too short. I don't like the head sculpt. The torso is completely eh. We didn't need this figure. I wasn't excited for the figure. No doubt about it, this is coming in at the bottom of the list for The Rock at number 6. Coming in at number 5, guys, we're going to go with Angelo Dawkins, and this one pains me to say, man. This one definitely pains me to say because I love Angelo Dawkins. I like the cloth jacket. I just don't like the way, like, his shorts just look really odd to me, how thick they are. I don't like that you can't even move his arms around. Uh, his torso's too big, in my opinion. I just think that the, the just the tooling of this guy could have been a lot better. Even though I was super excited for it, it really let me down, and I don't know about this knee problem. Problem. Like, I can't even bend the knee all the way without the calf popping off. And if I can't even pose the guy around the way I want to, it's just a really big bummer. So I did have to put Angelo Dawkins here, and uh, that, that pains me to even do it, but I had to just, I mean, I still can't even bend the knee. Who knows if I'll ever be able to. That's why he comes in at number five. Coming in at number four, guys, we are going to go with Shinsuke Nakamura. I'm going with Shinsuke Nakamura. I think the head sculpt is not very good. I just am not hyped for this. Another thing is I'm not very big on his body suit attires. I like him much better when he just wears the pants. So my excitement level for the figure or my want to for the figure wasn't as high and the head sculpt definitely does deduct points but I think from the neck down it is damn good. I am very impressed with how slim it looks and how good it is and it really shocked me. I thought for sure this figure was going to be more near the bottom. It is at number four but it could have it could have when I thought about it I was thinking that it would come in at number five so it did raise up a spot on the countdown. Honestly you could probably switch in Shinsuke Nakamura or the number three figure which is going to be Stunning Steve Austin. I think the Stunning Steve is a really good figure from head to toe. My excitement excitement level for the figure was actually kind of high for it, and it lived up to the expectations. It's everything I would have expected out of a stunning Steve. It's just not going to get the usage that I would necessarily need, but Shinsuke's number four, and stunning Steve is number three. I think you could interchange these, but nonetheless, there is those. And then coming in at my two and one, guys, who is it going to be? You got husband and wife here, and coming in at the number two spot is going to be Montez Ford, and the number one figure is going to be Bianca Belair. Now, I could be wrong, guys, but this may be the first time ever that a woman's figure has been a top the countdown. You guys can let me know. Becky Lynch might have been very close. I can't remember if she won that or if she was very close. She might have been number three in the set or number two. I can't remember it because I know Buddy Murphy and Rey Mysterio win that set and they were really strong, but Bianca Belair is the best figure in the set. I was really happy to get her. My excitement level for both of these was through the roof. Montez Ford did end up, you know, disappointing me to a degree, which is why it knocked him down a peg. I don't like that he has no lower calf rotation. I really don't like that whatsoever. He's also on John Cena feet, which you guys know are very loose and he'll lean forward and plop 
every single time unless you like put some Mod Pods or something. I'm going to try and figure out a way around it. Don't know how successful that's going to be, but Bianca Belair is perfect. She comes with the cloth jacket. I like the head sculpt. I like everything. The only thing that could make it better is a posable wire in the ponytail, but I like the Ultimate Edition feet, the double jointed knees, the attire, the jacket. It is the best figure in the set, so congratulations to Bianca Belair for coming in at the number one spot. So let's recap here. Coming in at bottom, we have The Rock trying to face plant, you piece of shit. God in heaven. Number five, we have Angelo. Number four, we have Shinsuke. Number three, we have Stunning Steve. Number two, we have Montez Ford. And leading them all is the obvious Bianca Belair. I hope you guys did enjoy, but that pretty much does it for my review of Elite Series 81 and ranking the set and breaking down The Rock and Stunning Steve. Guys, I would love to know your ranking down in the comment section below. Overall, I think Stunning Steve, if you're a flashback collector, if you have Brian Pillman, you want him for your shelf, definitely go get it. If you were a WCW fan, if you were big back in wrestling back then, definitely go check it out and grab it. The Rock is completely skippable. I, I just don't see a reason to grab it unless you just are a huge Rock fan and want all his figures and you're gonna fix it up. But that pretty much does it for the review, guys. Again, huge shout out to Ringside Collectibles. Go over there and use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%. WrestlingFigures.com. Get in on all their sales. Go grab these figures. Get some percentage off. I think Elite 82 is actually shipping right now, so definitely go check that out and grab those. Use promo code MDTOYS, but I'm getting the hell out of here, guys. For our shout out today, guys, it's gonna go out to Sebastian Carrillo. He says 0.52 seconds. My mom thought someone was cussing at me. Then I said, nah, it's just the greatest YouTuber. Huge shout out to Sebastian for the nice comment. And I definitely would not be cussing at the fans right there. Brad, just not, not gonna be doing that. But I appreciate you guys watching. Huge shout out to Sebastian for that. And huge shout out to Sebastian's mom. Just know I'm not cussing at your children. But thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. Let me know what you think of it down below. Leave me your ranking down in the comments. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.